MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Good morning, friends. Let's join together in our call to worship with friends and strangers, with family and neighbors. We gather. With faith reaching out to touch, with hearts straining to trust, we hope. With word and wonder, with silence and song, we wait. Come among us to lift us to our feet to follow you. Friends, indeed, let us rise on our feet as we join together in our opening hymn this morning. To God be the glory. God be the glory. May that presence of healing, of wholeness, of saving be with us this morning. May we, as we gather here, know that our God is in this place, in our hearts. So let us receive the blessings that are here and are about to appear. 
not only as we gather, but as we live our lives in the presence of God. Blessings upon this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome, friends, here to Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles, on this night, not quite as hot morning, but I'm certain it will later, but just in case it does. You can pick your fan of choice. We have five different fans now from which you might choose that are located in the back of the sanctuary that you might get as you come in, ask an usher to get for you. Why use the tasteless bulletins for fans? Thank you very much. It's a great story about these fans, I'll tell you in a bit. Friends, I'm Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, Minister of Congregational Life here at MCCLA. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas, I welcome each and every one of you here this day. Uh, Reverend Neil is in Toronto, Canada, as uh, we gather here this morning. He's there to, um, to be a part of the uh, um, Large Church Pastors Conference. I almost wanted to tell him that doesn't quite fit you because you're not a large pastor anymore. <laughs> But indeed, he is a pastor of a large and growing and dynamic church. So he's there with his, with his colleagues this week. Um, so blessings upon him and all who have gathered. If you are visiting with us for the first time, however, I'm going to invite you to raise your hand so that we might acknowledge you and welcome you here this morning. Is there anybody with us who's, who's visiting for the first time or hasn't been back in a while? Yeah. <laughs> Steve in the back. Welcome. Except uh, this, uh, the brochure with information about us, there's also a card in there you can fill out, put in the um, offering plate at any time. When it comes around at offering, uh, it'll give us information that uh, we can stay in touch with each other. Also, of course, the little black books are going to be coming around in a moment that you, we invite everyone to sign in on, uh, if, especially if you have any updates in phones, emails, that, or addresses. All of those change a lot in Los Angeles, I have found. So please uh, go ahead and let us know at least that you were here. If you are in need of a call from a pastor, please indicate that as well, and we will get with you um, in this week. If there, there's a, uh, a really deep need, however, please see any of us who've been up on the dais this morning, and we would be more than happy to connect with you after service. I have a few announcements, but before we get to our planned one, I want to let you know about a few things. Uh, last night was our housewarming party, and uh, we, it was also a fundraiser for the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. And it's uh, very, very proud to announce that over $2,200 was raised um, to go to the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. And, and actually more uh, will be on its way. So that's very exciting. Those monies will be used for scholarships that will be given to those who are in school who are, are forwarding the work with, it, um, with queer folk. Uh, applications can be received from, um, from the board or the office, so you can see any board member um, or Amy who is not here right now, and they can direct you to those. I know Michael um, is on the board. Just raise your hand. You can, and Susie, but she's upstairs. Um, so see, uh, see any of them or myself, and we'll get you in the right direction. Also, uh, the, to, to let folks know, um, a, a couple weeks ago, Reverend Neil had uh, talked about the ramp, I believe, Okay, we're going to come to a compromise. Please try not to use it unless you really need it. However, we are lifting the, lifting the sanctions. People can use it to come in. But really, really, let's try to keep it for those who are in, in physical need. Primarily so that we don't get a, a, a hookup on traffic and those who, who need to use it can, can have the use of it. So I just want to put that out to you. Um, I was also asked to share that if you are in a wheelchair, um, please, have a, please have your caretaker, or you can ask an usher. When you come in, come in backwards off the ramp, or you might go tumbling. Um, so it's just how the ramp is at the moment. Um, these were concerns that were raised this week, and we want everyone to experience healing and not have to experience healing when they <laughs> come here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> One more uh, unplanned announcement to share with you. Uh, it's many of you know of the two young women who were shot in Texas. Uh, there is going to be a vigil tonight 
at, um, at the, uh, the Triangle in West Hollywood on Crescent Heights and, and Santa Monica at 7.30. So if you would like to uh, take part in that, you are welcome to be there. Now, on with what uh, our planned announcements are. Our Pride to Thrive Drive. Uh, today is technically the last day. I know that it got lost a little bit when we, because we moved at the very beginning and then we had pride, but this is one of, I, I love how we do social justice here. Um, we might not think that providing our old clothes that are still nice or providing our services to mentor or to tutor isn't social justice and social action, but it is. There are a number of queer youth who are serviced by the Gay and Lesbian Center, particularly by the Jeff Griffith Youth Center, that are in need. They don't want to just house them. They want to provide an opportunity for them to become a part of the community in a thriving way. So friends, I want you to see Tori after service. Tori, could you please raise your hand? If you have not had an opportunity to um, donate or to volunteer, please see him. This is in conjunction, not because Cola Me and Gay Men's Chorus is donating more, <laughs> but really because I know that this is a passionate group of people with an incredible amount of talent. So if, it, if you are at all interested, please see Tori after service for more information. Next, we have a lot of great ministries here, and one is our kids' club. We don't usually see it here at the 9, um, but it happens at the 11. Those of us with kids are invited to bring them for the 11 o'clock service. We have an incredible, incredible um, school building that we have use of on Sunday mornings. Um, some of the kids are like, woohoo, I really like coming to kids' club now. Not that they didn't before, teachers. <laughs> But it's, it's an incredible space, incredible teachers, and they need some assistance. So if you've had any yearning to work with kids, I'm going to invite you to, um, to, to check it out. Come see me, and I'll get you hooked up with Dean Coffee um, and to, so you can volunteer, even if it's just once a month at the 11. See, you can come to the 9, get fed, and then go feed at the 11. Works out, huh? Okay. <laughs> Now, this Wednesday is uh, 4th of July, and so we are going to be um, closed. The offices and our programs will be closed for that day, um, so enjoy your celebrations, but just do it safely, please. Uh, so I just want to let you know that Bible study, Wednesday night study, Taze, and choir practice will not be taking place this week, and the offices will be closed. 12-step groups and support groups are still happening at their regular scheduled time in their regularly scheduled places. Now, again, social justice, the MCC way, faith and family night. The Sparks, the women's basketball, professional basketball team, uh, is having their faith and family night, and our women's group has decided, hey, let's group get a group of MCC folks, the MCC families, to go be a part of the family and faith night. Um, after service, there's going to be tickets on sale. It's $18, and that includes the basketball game as well as a gospel concert. So, hun, e, let's go and show our love for God as well as our love for basketball. If you don't love both of them, you'll love one of them. So, <laughs> so please see Lucia Chappelle for more information. Just a few more again. Social Action, the MCC way. Annual backpack drive will be starting. Um, we're, now we're going to be going to more little kids. Um, this is what we do every year. We're going to be kicking it off next, next week. It's going to go through August, August 19th. Uh, there will be a list coming out of what's needed, but we um, provide backpacks for children at domestic violence shelters, um, it, kids in impoverished schools, as well as backpacks for um, children whose families are afflicted with HIV, as well as um, uh, some of the young folk at Jeff Griffith. So we'll have a list for that coming up soon. Last two announcements. We're bringing the picnic inside. If you're under 30-ish, join the tribe for our summer get-together, Sunday, July 22nd. It'll be after the 11 o'clock service in the room directly located behind the sanctuary. You can enter it off of the um, courtyard. It's a time for those under 30 to get together to form community even more tightly than we have. Um, this is sponsored by the Tribe, which is our outreach to young adults. So please see Michael um, if you have any questions. And ready, set, go. There is nothing social action about this announcement. <laughs> I can't even stretch it. <laughs> this is our annual 
oh my God, it's San Diego Pride, let's go have some campy fun with each other on the way down for a Pride celebration. We're gonna be uh, renting the bus as we usually do on July 21st, leaves at 8 a.m., returns at 10 p.m., $25, that's for the bus ride only. Um, not for entry into the festival, um, see Roger Owens, who also will be out in the um, courtyard with more information after service. So, wow, we got lots of stuff going on here. We're just continuing to serve God and have fun while we're at it. Amen? Amen. 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 So here's another way to have some fun. Turn around, introduce yourself, say hello, welcome each other here this morning. Today's scripture reading is Mark 5, 21 to 34. After Jesus crossed over by boat, a large crowd met him at the seaside. One of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. When he saw Jesus, he fell to his knees beside himself as he begged, my dear daughter is at death's door. Come and lay hands on her so she will get well and live. Jesus went with him, the whole crowd tagging along, pushing and jostling him. A woman who had suffered a condition of hemorrhaging for 12 years. A long succession of physicians had treated her and treated her badly, taking all her money and leaving her worse than ever before, had heard about Jesus. She slipped in from behind and touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can get well. The moment she did it, the flow of blood dried up. She could feel the change and knew her plague was over and done with. At the same moment, Jesus felt energy discharging from him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said, what are you talking about? Why this crowd is pushing and jostling you, you're asking who touched me? Dozens have touched you. But he went on asking, looking around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had happened, knowing she was the one, stepped up in fear and trembling, knelt before him and gave him the whole story. Jesus said to her, daughter, you took a risk of faith and now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed, and be healed. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. So friends, as we allow ourselves to open to hear the word, may we remember first and foremost that we are worthy, not only to just be here, but to be, to live, to live freely and fully, being worthy of God and living a life to glorify God. So I ask blessings upon this message made indeed 
be the words from you and may it be received in our hearts and our minds and our souls. I ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen and amen. You know, when it came time to look at the scripture for this morning, and this happens to be the lectionary reading, meaning that it's already pre-programmed, if you will, to, for, for preachers, that this is what uh, you get to preach on for today. And when I read it, I was so, so excited. I was excited because it's incredibly rich, and I just used part of the story. The whole reading for today includes Jairus, who you heard about um, briefly, whose daughter was ill, in fact, on death's door, and then uh, along the way, Jesus goes to heal her and then gets stopped by this woman, and I love this. I love, we've all heard it. If only I could touch the hem of his garment. If only the faith within her, her belief that if only she could touch, she could be healed. Well, the rest of the story goes on that, and I love the part, who touched me? (laughs) You know what? If I was a disciple, I would have said the same thing. Hello, there's only hundreds of people around you. Who touched you? Hello. But Jesus, being who Jesus is, knew exactly what had happened. This part then that we didn't read is that they then, after that, they, they return going to Jairus' house, but are met with people who tell them, your daughter is dead, don't waste your time. But Jesus keeps on going. And the rest of the story is, is that, he, as he says, no, your daughter is not dead, she is only sleeping. The story goes on, of course, that this 12-year-old, this girl who had been alive for all of the time that she had been alive, the woman who touched Jesus' hem had been bleeding, had been suffering. So fabulously complicated, love it, but the moral to all of the stories is that in the presence of Christ, there is healing. Amen? And healing from Christ, from God, from Jesus, knows no bounds. You don't have to be rich or poor. You don't have to be young or old. You don't have to be a believer or a non-believer. The healing is for all. When you think about it, Jairus, Jairus, who was the head of the synagogue, he was a high ruler in the Jewish society. And remember, those who were the leaders at the time weren't too convinced, shall we say, on this Jesus guy. You know, he didn't quite follow the rules. He didn't quite fit into the mold. But Jairus was open enough to seek healing when all else failed. Everything else had failed. You can be assured that he had the money for the doctors for his daughter. And all of the material world couldn't heal his daughter. And think about it. Any parents in here, when you're, if, if it came up that your child was sick, you would do anything to help save that child. Amen? Looking at parents in here. And if you know this, that maybe you don't have kids, but that person who is so close to you that you would walk on coals to find healing for your child. There's a story this week that, that in the, I think it was in, it was in one of the storms in Florida, I want to say, this week. A young woman, storm came, And she threw herself over her three-year-old daughter and held her so that she wouldn't be affected by the storms. It was a hurricane. Took her trailer, trailer park, took her trailer. It was not found where it originally was, but the mother was found dead, still protecting her three-year-old with her body. Her child lived. She did not. The sacrifice that parents will do for their children. That's what Jairus was willing to do. Jairus was willing 
to sacrifice his position because you can be assured that when he went to work to the next day, there were going to be wagon tongues about what on earth he was doing, going to Jesus for healing. Amen? This was a wealthy man by their standards. This was somebody of high station who was on the other side, if you will, of who Jesus was and what he had to say to the world. But he was willing to sacrifice. He didn't care because on some level he knew that healing could and would happen. Healing comes to those in high places. The girl, fast forward to the little girl, the 12-year-old girl who had yet to have a life, if you will, You know, the 12-year-old part of it's important because it says that she's about to become a woman. She's about to live her life in their society. She was then old enough to get married, have a family. She doesn't have much choice in any of this. But on some level, her spirit allowed the healing presence of God. And she lived to tell another day. And then there's the woman who had been suffering for 12 long years. She was hemorrhaging. For women in here, you know what that's talking about. For men in here, you've been around women. (laughs) The pain of constant bleeding. The pain of constant bleeding. I, I can't even imagine what it was like for her let alone anemia, most certainly, loss of all of that blood. But more importantly, see, we take this for granted, and this is where we have to see her in her time. She was an outcast. Because bleeding of any kind, and especially a woman and a woman's blood and a woman's bleeding, she was ostracized from her community. She was unclean. She could not go to synagogue. She would, if she came up the stairs, if this was her synagogue, if she walked up these stairs, our fabulously welcoming greeters and ushers would tell her, no, you cannot come in here for you will defile this place. How many of you has it, did it take incredible courage for the first time you ever came to an MCC? Could you imagine what it would be like if somebody was there telling you no? Many people in here, unfortunately, have experienced that in other churches on one level or another, symbolically or literally. I know that there are some in here who have gone to walk up the stairs of their church and have been told you are unclean and you are unwelcome to come into this house of God. Amen? Imagine the courage she had, the courage she had to take that step and say, no, the power, the healing power of God, I know it's there, I know it's real, even when my church tells me no. The church told her, no, you are not welcome. Her faith community, her culture, her society said, you are an outcast. You shall live on the fringes of society. And I want you to just think about what it took for her to go through that crowd, to even think that she was worthy enough, to know that she was worthy enough to reach out and just, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. You know, it says she had great faith. Others say she had incredible trust. She trusted her instinct. She trusted what she and I believe all of us know on the deepest of levels is that people can close doors, but God will not. God will not. You know, she had experience. She, too, had gone through the doctors. This is a tangent, but boy, did I think it was appropriate for this week. She had gone to all these doctors, spent all of her money, and woohoo! she didn't find any healing. That is not anything against doctors, just that whole health profession. And, and considering all of this, gosh, why on earth are we debating whether people should have access to health care is beyond me, okay? Amen. All right, off that box. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woohoo! 
but I am so glad that people are going to be able to be insured. All right. <laughs> anyway, as back to our story. <laughs> but isn't it appropriate? How appropriate this week? And I didn't even plan that part. <laughs> Some said she had great faith. But for Jesus, she had great trust. Because do you notice that she was not proclaimed healed until she was in direct relationship with Jesus? What do I mean? When she touched his hem, the blood flow stopped. But it wasn't until he was insistent to see the person who had touched him, to speak with her, that she was healed and brought to wholeness. Friends, sometimes we can go through physical healings in our lives. Some of us can, can okay, our situations are changed. We got a job back. We've been praying for a job. We got a job. We prayed for physical healing, and we got the physical healing. Hallelujah. We mended our relationship, or we left our relationship, whichever is the better of the two for you. (laughs) But we're on to a better way. But it is not until we allow ourselves, surrender ourselves, and we humble ourselves to be in direct relationship with Jesus that our healing and wholeness comes to pass. It wasn't until, and I see, I don't think Jesus was saying, who touched me, because he didn't know who. He kept saying it because he wanted her to know she was worthy of that healing. She didn't have to come and steal that healing. He was willing to be present with her, and what did he do? Did he call her by name? Oh, Sally. Oh, Sally, you are healed. No. Daughter. Daughter. You are healed. For Jesus brings all back into family, back into community. This woman had no family anymore in her life. And what did Jesus do? Not only allowed his healing energy to go to her, but to say, you are a part of my family. You're not my sister. You're not my brother. You are my daughter. You are my offspring. And I will pay the ultimate sacrifice so that you will have a whole and complete life if and only if you trust me. Amen? And my question for us is, do we trust God enough? to present ourselves humbly, wholly, completely, and vulnerably to the God who loves us and calls us child. You know, in my own life, I've had ups and downs, as we all have. And, you know, doesn't healing also come in interesting ways? You think you've made the decision that you just know is going to be the road to healing, right? And God says, well, yeah, kind of. But look at the detour I'm going to take you on. And you get on this detour and you're like, but that's where I, no. See, the healing, for instance, that I find that comes when somebody loses a job or loses a loved one or (sighs) falls off the wagon or has a physical illness doesn't necessarily come with a snap of the finger And magically, the problem disappears. The real healing, I believe, comes when we can allow ourselves to trust God as the woman trusted Jesus, to surrender ourselves like Jairus did, to humble ourselves so completely that we are willing to risk everything to be in right relationship with Jesus, with Christ, to allow ourselves to say, I'm not going to stop trying. I am going to open myself up to receive what is given to me. Sometimes, friends, when we go down a journey that we think is one of just great turmoil, it could, it very well could be the time that God is journeying, having you journey with God to bring you deep inner healing. Amen? If there is at this time in our lives something that is undone, something that is uncomfortable, something where there's still that little splinter in your paw, 
Somewhere in your life, you're still bleeding, lost love, heart still broken, blood gushing, amen, right? Somebody hurt me? Well, it's time to forgive. Is there a broken relationship in your life right now? Are you willing to surrender yourself in the situation to God to see what truly it is that God has laid out for you, promised for you? Are you willing to take the risk to do the hard work? Are we willing to do the hard work? And sometimes that means exposing ourselves completely to God. It was me, God. It was me. I am the one. Friends, we live in Los Angeles, and there aren't just hundreds of people following. There's thousands and thousands and thousands. I'm certain all of us have the experience, whether we're in our car or walking down the street of like, or in a mall or someplace, there's all these people. But in the busyness of our lives, do we allow ourselves to stay focused? Do we allow ourselves to stay focused, reaching for God? never giving up our sight that we will make it and not go astray. Food for thought, healing for our souls. We are worthy. We are worthy indeed. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Precious Creator, Jesus the great physician, you're, you're not a trickster or a miracle worker, but you are a God of miracles. You allow us to believe in ourselves when we have forgotten how. Be with us at this time to continue to give us the courage to reach out, to stay focused on you and only you, even in the midst of chaos in our lives, to allow ourselves to reach more fully and then out ourselves to you, to allow ourselves to go a step further and to receive what is already there, to receive our position in your heart as your child, your son, your daughter this day. And no matter where we are in our physical health, mental or spiritual health, May we all know that healing still happens. Bless these words, bless those who received, including myself, that we might be enriched in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
What a message, huh? How many of us have experienced that healing that Reverend Pat was telling us about? All of us. I can remember not too long ago I was in need of serious physical healing and God provided it. So it's kind of an emotional <laughs> topic for me. Thank you, Reverend Pat. Um, I want to tell you a little story about a man uh, named Carl Rogers. He is um, a personal hero of mine. Um, in 1902, he was born into a traditional Midwestern farming family, Beca uh, an excellent student, became first interested in studying agriculture um, and following in his family's footsteps, but soon had a, uh, felt the hand of God in his life and decided to study ministry. He went to China with a group of young people and it totally changed his life. He came back to the U.S., finished his undergrad degree, and decided to study psychology because he understood the power of healing. So he is now considered the father of modern psychotherapy. Um, he was a, the most amazing individual, warm, caring. I, I could only imagine what it would be like being in therapy with him. But he said some rather interesting things and, you know, in the vein that all truth is God's truth and all truth is our truth. He said, the curious paradox is that when I accept myself as I am, then I can change. He also said, the good life is a process, not a state of being. It is a direction, not a destination. That's certainly the philosophy of this body of believers. And in that light, um, I want to tell you another little story about a man very much like Dr. Rogers, but not as educated. He is my father. My father, McKinley Sutherland, was had a ninth grade education, but a great, great love of young people. Uh, about, um, well, I'd say about a year and a half, two years ago, I began helping out with the tribe. I really believe that, that young people are the future of our denomination, our church, and our world. And those of us involved with the tribe um, want to foster leadership amongst the young adults in our, in our congregation. So I was um, approached by a lawyer who said, your family has this property in some remote area of Kentucky that I've never been to. And uh, I was like, okay. And he said, we want to give you this. It's just a little bit of money, but we want to give it to you. And in turn, I discussed it with Harry, my husband, and, and uh, we decided that we wanted to give it to the tribe. Um, as the seed money for a scholarship fund um, because we want to be able to send our young adults to leadership conferences. It would be wonderful if we could fully, fully pay for one of our young adults to go to the, um, the, the general conference next year. So in honor of my father and Dr. Carl Rogers, in a remote kind of way, we're setting up the McKinley Sutherland Scholarship Fund for Tribe. And so um, we're not competing with anybody. Remember, this, is, this has to be a burden God puts on your heart. If you feel that you would like to contribute to that cause, and there will be fundraisers for it in the near future, um, please see me, uh, Fred, or uh, Manny uh, to um, talk about it, okay? Um, keep in mind our pledge campaign is ongoing and we're beginning to, uh, to um, plan for 2013. You'll be hearing about that in the next few months. So um, you can continue to work on the uh, 2012, uh, putting in your pledge for 2012 and think about what you're going to do for next year. It's very important for, for the church. There are many ways you can contribute, including that mural up there, which is the illumination project that we will be kicking off within the next few weeks. 
So if you have any questions, see any of the board members and we can help you out with that, okay? Let's go before God and ask for his blessing. God, our creator, we're grateful for all that you do for us. We pray now that you bless these offerings for your work and bless those who give. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take a moment to breathe in the life, mm -hmm. the breath of life, and the breath of healing as we go together in prayer. You watch, timeless God, as we go hurrying and scurrying about, our worries and fears crowding around us until we can scarcely take a breath. You wait as we struggle to keep up with you constantly distracted by the fears which drain our faith and our hopes. You hope as we go from promise to promise, leaving each one broken behind us, the world bankrupting our dreams. You watch, you wait, you hope, and hearing the cries from the depths of our despair and brokenness, you lift us to our feet breathing new life into us. God in community, Holy One, we offer our hearts to you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Creator, we know the words we have spoken which have broken a relationship. We know the deeds we have done which separate us from friends and families. 
we know we have failed to be faithful followers of Jesus. Let us now confess our sins, trusting that God will touch us with the healing power of God's grace. come together in community prayer of confession. Forgive us, us, God of gentle hope. hope. You do do not keep keep a list of all that we have done wrong, but erase our failings and foolishness. Writing a new ending for our lives, you you touch touch us with with your grace, grace. you You lift lift us to our feet, You strengthen us so we may follow Jesus in service to all of your children. This is the good news, dear friends. God's love has no ending. Mm -hmm. God's hope rests upon us each day. Mm -hmm. God's forgiveness restores us to new life. Our God listens to us, to our cries and to our joys, to our hopes and to our hearts. Thanks be to God, we are a forgiven and a forgiving people. Amen. Amen. My friends, the God of hope is in you. And also in you. People of God, offer your hearts to God. We open them to the joy God has for us. People of love, proclaim your love for God. We sing to the one whose steadfast love is forever. So with all of the mighty who have fallen and all the lowly who have been lifted to their feet, we join our voices in singing your glory.
friends, as Jesus' healing is for all, so is this table, which is why we remember this story each time that we gather. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples. And taking bread, simple bread, the matzah, the unleavened bread, he took and he asked blessings upon it, he broke it and he shared it with those who were there as it is shared with you and with me this day. This is my body, my body which is broken for you. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that when our bodies are broken. That Jesus' broken body <coughs> is offered to us. Jesus knows suffering and offers to us in our times of suffering as well as celebration. Here I am. Here I am. I am given for you. But remember that indeed our journey is to wholeness. Likewise, following the supper, Jesus took a cup from the table, filled, it was said, to overflowing, filled with his blood, his life essence. He asked blessings upon it and gave it to all who were there as it is offered to you and to me this day. Hear and take of this, for indeed it is my life-giving blood. It is all of who I am. I ask you to drink fully of it, so that when you do, that you might indeed know wholeness, no healing, and that it is yours for all time to come. Here at this table which is prepared for us, we watch and we wait for peace and hope. Pour out your source of healing on your children and on these gifts of life and joy. Let our hearts may be made whole by the breaking of the bread. Send us into the broken world that we might bind up their wounds as our hollow souls are filled with the tender taste from the cup of life, the cup of heaven. May we empty ourselves so that we might embrace those that are cast off by the world. And when we watch and we wait no longer, that are gathered together around the feast in heaven as we join our hands and our hearts and our voices with our sisters and brothers from every time and every place. We will fill your heart with songs of thanksgiving, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. Friends, indeed, this table has been set not by us, we simply were the servants to put the elements on this table. Yes. But this table, this table of acceptance, of healing, is given to us by God to share with one another. Here at Metropolitan Community Church, as with all MCCs around the world, we share and we celebrate an open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and partake. If you are that woman, who has been bleeding for all of these years, you are welcome at this table. Yes. If you feel that you have been kept away from the Lord's Supper, that is no longer true, for it was never true. Amen. If you wonder, am I worthy? You are worthy. Yes. This is an open table. The ushers are going to guide you in a moment to stations located here in the front. We ask that you follow their direction. And as you come to us, it is our tradition here to take the elements, dip them in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a brief blessing with you. If you would like one or the other, let us know so we might best serve you. If this morning you want to come forward and just partake of the elements, but with no human intercession, there will be an altar of consecrated elements to your right, to which you might go at any time and receive. If you choose to be where you are, that's fine, because God is still with you. We just simply ask that during these few moments carved out of this day, you allow yourself to be in prayer, be one with, intentionally, the God who loves you most. So let's keep this feast one with the other. 
May the acolytes and servers please join us.
more needs to be said. It is well, it is well with our souls. May we allow ourselves to be filled and to share this meal one with the other. And indeed, this meal is never ended. For as long as God lives, as long as we live, there are more to feed. There are more who are hungry. So let us offer the meal given to us so freely. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Friends, let's rise as we're able. As we join our Before we do the benediction, I told you there's a story, and I have to share this. Sometimes when we uh, order church supplies, it's always interesting because you never know who you're going to have on the other end of the line. Oftentimes, it's, let's just say, more conservative folk than we are. (laughs) Reverend Neal was ordering these fans, and the woman said, and which church are you with? And he says, Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. And remember, he's calling Texas, Oh my God, is that MCC? My mamas went to MCC here in Texas. I grew up in MCC, amen? (laughs) Friends, don't ever underestimate the far-reaching effects that you and I have as children of God, amen? (laughs) Amen, let's go in peace, receive the blessings, amen. for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship.
Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are a part of us.